Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel. We're down here on the Bluefield Sports range to test out a new gun. This is the Grand Power Tyrannus. Now, this does have a bigger brother, which is the Strybog in 9mm. The Strybog itself features a roller delayed blowback action, whereas this is just a straight uh, blowback action in 2 Two. So it's a 2-2 semi-automatic and Grand Power intends this to be a training rifle. Obviously in the UK we can't own the semi-automatic 9mm version so we are left with just the semi-automatic 2-2. It's intended as a training rifle so that you don't spend all of your money on 9mm and you can get proficient with the platform in 2-2 long rifle. Apart from the difference in the action, all of the controls and the ergonomics are exactly the same between the 2.2 Tyrannus and the 9mm Strybog. Otto, who runs Cotswold Classic Arms, has very kindly sent this down to us because he's made some pretty big claims. He says that the Strybog, the 9mm version, is an MP5 beta, meaning that for the various MP5 2.2 clones we have available in the UK, he claims that this is going to outperform them and be an all-round better rifle. And that's quite a big claim there. For comparison, I do actually have one of the better MP5 clones. Now this is the fake suppressed version, it was available without the fake suppressor, so just a standard MP5, this is the SD variant. And this was made under licensed by Umarex for HK and was certainly one of the better clones on the market. Unfortunately, these rifles were discontinued by Umarex and the only other people that were making them was actually GSG. It had a direct MP5 clone, which they also discontinued, and I would easily say that the uh, Umarex clones outperformed the GSGs consistently. I've put a number of magazines worth of ammo through both of the guns to give a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, and well, why would you turn down the chance to shoot two guns instead of one? My initial impressions of the Tyrannus are very, very good. It feels like a really nice gun. Everything feels solid. Everything feels very ergonomic. It was very natural to, to bring up and shoot. You do have these flip up sights there. You have these incredibly low profile ones, which you can use on the fly or you can put up the rings. And I found it very, very natural, very easy to get on target and get shooting with it. I did struggle a little bit actually with the MP5 SD from Numerec. I was always just trying to find the targets. I think that was more down to the sights on that. So definitely a big plus on the flip up sights for this. But also you can see, and this has always been one of my biggest issues with all the clones, it's a bit rattly. Now perhaps, you know, this needs a bit of TLC and some tightening, but it just feels cheaper and it felt a lot more uncomfortable, especially the stock there. Trying to get a comfortable position and get down on it, but I found that with the uh, the 9mm versions in semi-auto as well when we shot them out in Prague. So as a gun to shoot, as an overall package, definitely a big thumbs up for the Tyrannus. Now we only put a couple of hundred rounds through both of the guns, they both work flawlessly. So, you know, it's not a huge test of reliability, but straight out of the box, you know, 200 rounds through it and not a single issue, then, you know, that, that's got to say something. We were using CCI Mini Mag, it's my go-to test round. Basically, if a gun won't work with CCI Mini Mag, it won't work with anything. The controls of it, so this is actually fairly um, unique and a bit, bit different for this rifle. Obviously you've got this side charging handle and it does look like it can be made to be ambidextrous. It's set up for right hand shooter at the moment. The controls are a bit weird on this model though. So safe is actually in an AR-15 fire position, which if you're used to AR-15 platform, can be a little bit of a confusion. Otto is bringing out some different safeties to reverse this. So, you know, that will be safe and that will be fire. But as it comes at the moment, it, it is different. Um, you've got your uh, magazine release here. Obviously, you know, fairly AR, uh, but that's easy to get onto. And again, it is ambidextrous. So all your left handies out there are gonna be loving this. And also the bolt release. It's actually very AK-esque. This little bit of sheet metal here. So you can lock the bolt back and then to release it, you can either flick it down or you can use the charging handle. So just bring it back and, and release. It does seem to 
for maybe non-UK versions also have a collapsible folding stock. Now the MP5 clones from Umarex have this, the non-SD version has one that um, folds at the side and obviously this has the adjustable folding right in. So this can actually go into quite a small package and still be shot being UK legal. Looking at the measurements of this, it looks like it does have the 12 inch barrel coming up to there. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be enough with the uh, stock collapsed to be able to be UK legal. So it looks like it has been pinned uh, or we're just not figuring out how to use it, but it's quite obvious that that's the button. It's rock solid. So it's not gonna be collapsible. Uh, unfortunately, I have seen online it is available in three barrel lengths. Obviously, as I said, this is the 12 inch. There is a, I think it's a 10 or 10 and a half, which isn't going to be UK legal, so not available here. But there is also a 16 and a half inch barrel available. Other features, you've obviously got this lovely large Picatinny rail on top and on the underside of the fore end. So plenty of real estate for any accessories you want to mount on there. Obviously, a red dot or a scope is gonna be your first priority. Another nice little feature in the fore end there, you can actually see the, the M-lock slots. So you can put anything on the side uh, that you want to, that's M-lock. Another thing that I think really sets this gun apart from all of the MP5 clones, especially the Umarex ones, uh, is how you can get to everything and how sort of field serviceable this rifle is. So it breaks down like an AR um, and you can get to all of the, uh, the trigger mechanisms um, and you can get to the bolt from the inside there. A notorious issue with these is that they're an absolute pig to clean and maintain. I'm not even gonna try and attempt to break it down, but the, the trigger mechanism inside it is actually encased in one unit. And I believe that if you were to go start taking that unit apart, it would void your warranty, which has always put me off the Umarex HK clones like the 416, because you can't actually get into the nitty gritty to be able to service the rifle. Is this an MP5 beta? Well, without shooting the 9mm version of it, it's very hard for me to say. I have had the fortune of shooting both semi-auto and full-auto MP5. Again, without shooting the 9mm version of this, I can't say it's an MP5 beta. But is it an MP5 clone beta? Now, it depends why you're buying an MP5 clone. If you want an MP5 clone, then this is going to let you down because, well, there's one main reason you're gonna buy an MP5 clone. You all know what it is. It's the slap. It is that um, cocking handle there. That's why everyone wants to go for an MP5 specifically. And also it's a very famous movie gun being in big movies like Die Hard, Ho Ho Ho. So yeah, in terms of getting your MP5 fix, this probably isn't the gun for you. But if you're looking for say, a submachine gun clone, this I think wipes the floor with all of the MP5 clones that are available in the UK as a general gun. So if you're not so worried about it looking like and mimicking all of the exact controls of the MP5, I think this is a great option. The price of this gun, I think, is actually its worst feature. This is available in this specification from Cotswold Classic Arms for £955. So not just the submachine gun clones or the MP5 clones, for a semi-automatic 2-2 rifle, that's very much on the top end, considering that you can go and get a Smith & Wesson 1522 for only about £600. And to be able to say how this competes with a 1522, I'm gonna to have to do a lot more shooting with it, but it's a good gun. I'm probably, if I had to choose between a 1522 and the Tyrannus, it is gonna be the 1522 as well. And when you bring into the fact that this is 300 pound more than a 1522, you're in the ballpark of the Chris Defiance, you're easily over the, uh, the Vector, um, and the, you know there's a huge wealth of selection when you're looking around the 1,000 pound mark. But it's definitely one to check out. And certainly if you're looking for something different in 2.2, if you already have an AR-15 platform rifle or you don't like AR-15 platform rifles and you're looking for a semi-automatic 2.2, I really don't think you can go wrong with this. It would be great to put some more ammunition through it and really test it for reliability. In terms of a competition gun, 
unlike the uh, the vector the vector is just a little bit weird for me for for competition the way it's laid out this i could see being quite a competent competition gun again is it going to give you the speed um, and the overall versatility of an ar-15 platform I don't know, but it's certainly going to hold its own and I wouldn't be surprised to see a number of people running these on the competition circuit. The last thing to touch on will be the magazine. So this gun does come with two magazines as standard. They're 25 round magazines, which is nice. And it does come with the hard case as well. It's always nice to get these things you know, thrown in and they're not stingy with just one magazine. Even the magazines comparing the MP5 with the Tyrannus, the magazines are better. They feel more robust. They're more comfortable to load and easier to load. So again, a big plus on those. But there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting with the new Tyrannus. If you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed for future videos and reviews. And as always guys, I hope to see you soon. How, how the f do you pronounce this thing again? It's, it's the Stryborg? Stryborg. Strybog. It's the Strybog and then the Tyrannus. Tyrannus. Strybog and Tyrannus. I'm gonna f that up so hard, but anyway. Yeah, Bigger brother of this, the Strybog. A, no, Berg. Strybog. Strybog. Between the the Tyrannus and the for uh, full Strybog. Berg. Strybog. For sake. That's got to be your outtake, by the way. Because that camera's recording the whole time.